Steven, it seems yeah. like, you know, you mentioned kind of the, I think the three steps of the self-determination theory uh, and, and kind of getting into the second piece of that, of, of giving people the, the chance to make progress and improve. Uh, it seems to me that very much like the title of the book, Do Hard Things, exposing our kids to doing hard things is a practice that if done correctly, will give them tremendous advantages, I believe, kind of over, over the average. Uh, and I'm curious, what's the, how do we determine the correct level of challenge? Is that challenges that are within reach so they can be successful or challenges that are just out of reach so that maybe they can fail with a support system in place? How, how do you view that? Yeah. What's, so, maybe, what's the research on that? So I, I think what the research and how I view it is, it's, I'm going to give you the cop out answer, which is it's a little bit of both is you want to, if you look at the appropriate challenge, you know, I'll use the athletic analogy. You know, most of your workouts should be, you know, within your reach, right? If I'm going to the gym and I'm lifting weights, I want to, I want to see, you know, I want to keep going back consistently. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to lift a heavy weight, but it is one where I can do it. But mm -hmm. every once in a while, you want to test where you're at. You want to push beyond maybe what you're comfortable doing and saying, Hey, am, am I capable of lifting this heavier bar? And, and you're going to fail some. I think the same thing goes with the challenges in our life is that that often, you know, we need to do things that are just on the bound and then occasionally just over that bound of what we're capable of where we might, you know, quote unquote fail because it's only when we're in those situations, when we feel that maybe that alarm that is telling us, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm an imposter or you should quit. It's only when we experience that, that we learn how to navigate and deal with it. Because if we never go there, then everything is scary, right? Mm -hmm. if, we, if we never push our bounds, if we never put ourselves in situations that uh, create a little bit of anxiety or discomfort, then our brain literally learns to keep that alarm super high because it's never been put in that situation. And I think you know, we were talking about that nuance is in parenting. This is often that nuance place where sometimes we get way too protective. And if we get way too protective, then we're never training our, our kids, you know, alarm systems to get used to and processing that anxiety yeah. or that discomfort or that, that sense of failure. Um, and often, you know, the way I like to look at this, you know, athletically, especially with young kids is, when you watch your kid or the athlete you're working with, you know, lose a game, how do they handle that? Mm -hmm. And if they immediately, you know, default to freak out, this is the worst moment or shut down, that tells you probably that they haven't experienced failure enough to understand how to deal with it appropriately. Yep. That's, a, that's a great, that's a great barometer. It seems like like a lot of this book is kind of the perception and, and kind of how are you viewing this? And so that, that seems to be perhaps, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the big keys there following that failure is having that conversation to say, you know, what did you learn obviously, but I'm curious, what are the questions that you're asking after a failure? How do you get that kind of self-reflection to take place in a, in a productive manner? Yeah. So step one is I call it get out of stress mode because often you can't have that conversation yeah. when their mind is like, you know, spiraling Unclear. out of control. Yeah, they're not clear. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, it is before I have this conversation, and this is where I think we often make a mistake. We just jump in and like, hey, here's where you need to learn. And how do you learn from this? And what happens is that kid just shuts down because he's like, dude, I feel miserable. I don't want to talk about what I need to learn. Like, go away, mom or dad or mm -hmm. coach or what have you. <laughs> so instead, yeah. it's like, how do I get them out of the stress mode? And for me, you know, I'll give you the athletic sense is like, well, one of the best things I can do is like not talk about the game initially, but say like, hey, you know, go hang out with your your friends or like go eat the popsicle or the mm -hmm. orange after the game. And what happens is they hang out with their friends, they commiserate a little bit. But then because they're hanging out with their teammates and people they enjoy, it takes them out of stress mode. Right. And yeah. then you're able to have that conversation and ask those questions. And again, I would, I would frame it as how do I have this productive conversation without pushing them into defense and protect mode? 
So for me, it's just being curious. It's being like, hey, what did you what did you think about that? Like, yeah. well, you know, what do we think, you know, looking forward, like, okay, that's what you think, you know, what do we take into the next game or what can you learn from this? Or, you know, what, what, you know, maybe uh, would you change next go around? And you're just kind of being inquisitive and curious without pushing and, and, and prodding them to, uh, to kind of go down that path. 